Hi, welcome to a special episode of Juliet's Kitchen. Today I want to tell you a little bit about a friend of ours, John Barker and his land. Where we get our food from is a really important thing, especially when we start looking at how many food miles food has. So getting it from a local source and planting our own trees is a really important thing. Our friend John Barker has embarked on a project of creating a forest garden on a six acre plot over the last year and it's coming along really nicely but I'll let John tell you more about it. Where we get our food from is so important. I know where I want to get mine from and I want food to be my medicine. Well that's good, all the trees are going to bud so uh, around 95% uh, of what we planted last winter seems to have taken and one of the coldest winters for um, 30 years. Then we had the driest spring for over 100 years. Uh, then we had one of the dullest summers. <laughs> and then the autumn's been relatively dry again, apart from one very heavy day of rain. So we've had quite an exceptional weather uh, system this year. But the point of forest gardening uh, and growing perennials is that the roots go deeper, so they're more uh, they are better adapted to climate change than a lot of annual crops that farmers grow. They got hit very heavily by the uh, uh, the extremes of weather this year. A whole range of different fruit trees. We've got lots of apples, several um, local varieties, Darcy Spice, um, Kelvin and Wonder, um, lots of the classics, Spartan, uh, Cox, um, so on and so on. We've got raspberries we're starting to establish. Uh, we've got lots of plums, green gauges, um, uh, many different varieties. Uh, we have also got lots of hazelnuts, uh, we've got several walnut trees, we've got some French variety of walnut trees which should start producing in about three, four years, we should start getting nuts off of them and nuts obviously have gone up in price a lot recently because of all the fuel prices and so on so it's great we should be growing more and consuming more of our own nuts as well which store for months over the winter. Um, we've got uh, in the hedgerow we've got Mirabella plum, We've got um, sea buckthorn, which is a superfood. Uh, the fruits on there are beautiful, beautifully sweet, uh, and they're, uh, they're great ones for the antioxidants. So in, you get around 40, 50 years of fruit. So from an investment point of view, if you want to invest money, don't put it in the stock market, put it in fruit trees. Uh, we've done all the main digging work. Uh, Graham Norfolk was great helping out with uh, teaching us how to use a digger and dumper truck. Uh, we banked all, all the um, clay soil we got out of the pond, banked that up around the side. We're going to sow that with poppy seeds and mix some different wildflowers in the areas where the soil's a bit better and uh, put grass on that. Um, we're just finishing off, smoothing all, all, all the pond area out. It's got quite shallow banks around the side, which is better for wildlife, and a path all the way around. Around this circle, we've got 12 um, apple trees. Um, dedication to the fact that uh, we uh, only consume 10% of indigenous fruit in this country, 90% of it is all imported, so what we're trying to do is um, increase the amount of fruit production uh, in this area. Uh, and then around that we've got uh, the Celtic Corn Wheel of the Year, uh, linking to the uh, 30 moons of the year, so that um, kind of counterbalances the 12 fruit trees symbolising the Roman 12 month calendar. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been, been beautiful. We've um, been very lucky overall this year. It's been difficult at times, but um, we're, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. We've had a young son uh, on the 20th of December last year, so obviously, <laughs> yeah, 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 